Welcome back. Here we are, we're going to learn about multiplying probabilities. First of all, once again, a little recap. Last time we saw this diagram, remember that? Oh yeah, how that moved around. So we were able to add the probabilities 1, 6 to find out that the probability of an even die roll was 3 sixths or 1 half. This gave rise to the addition rule. The outcomes are mutually exclusive add probabilities to find the probability that one of them is happening. Mutually exclusive means they can't happen together. A die cannot be both 4 and 6. Situation uses OR. Looks like that. Now in this little video, we're going to see situations where things are not mutually exclusive, and so the addition rule doesn't hold, but there's going to be a multiplication rule we're going to be able to use. That's the preview. Here we go. We're going to move on. Consider colored dice. Here we see six dice, three red, three blue. The deal is you're going to pick one at random and roll it. So like they're in a bag or something, you reach in, you pull one out and roll it. And so what's going to happen is it's going to be either a red or a blue die and you're going to get a number. What's the probability that it's going to be blue? Notice the notation, P of blue. What's probability of being blue? Well, that's obviously a half, because there are three blue dice out of six dice, so three-sixths is one-half. What's the probability that it's a four? Could be blue or red. Well, we know that one, too. Whichever die it is, in order for it to be four, uh, that's a one-sixth probability. So that much should be straightforward. But now, what's the probability that it's blue and four? That is, what's the probability that you reach in you pull a blue die, and when you roll it, it turns out to be a four. First of all, that probability has got to be less than a half. Why is that? Because there's a half probability that it's blue, but once it's blue, you're not sure it's going to be a four. So the probability that it's going to be blue and four has to be less. The next one is a little more subtle. It's got to be less than a sixth. That's because if it's going to turn out to be a four, that probability is 1 6, but since it could be blue or red, it's got to be less than that. Turns out the answer is 1 12th, which is just what you might expect. You multiply the probabilities. Let's look at this with the pictures we were talking about before. Okay, here's a rectangle that represents all possibilities. Okay, half of them are blue, half of them are red. So the probability that it's blue is one half and the probability that it's red is one half. Now, we don't have to leave the rectangle in that orientation. All that matters is that it's a rectangle. So we'll move the red down there and it'll make it fatter. And we're making this picture. We can see half of it being blue and half of it being red. Still represents half and half probabilities. But once it's blue, we're going to roll it. Or once it's red, we're going to roll it. And it's going to change to this. See that? Now we want to know whether it's blue or 4. So we're going to take a look at this cell itself. Now this cell is where it's blue and 4, and how big is it? It's 1 12th of the entire rectangle. Note, mutually exclusive. This is not a mutually exclusive situation. It can be both blue and 4. It's not like not being 4 and 6. Okay, so here we go, the multiplication rule. If the outcomes are, red word, independent, you can multiply probabilities to find the probability of both of them happening. Independent means one of them does not affect the other. The fact that it's blue has no effect on the probability of its being a 4. It's 1 6 probability, whether it's blue or red. This situation uses the word and. Remember how the last one was or? This one uses and. The probability of the color is blue and the roll is 4 is 1 in 12. So here are both rules together. Outcomes are independent. You can multiply probabilities. If they're mutually exclusive, you can add probabilities to find the probability that any one of them happens. Two pieces of advice. First of all, don't memorize the rules as rules. They look like big hairy rules. Ah, just trying to memorize them is uh, asking for disaster. But do make sure they make sense. Second, and really important, when in doubt, draw a picture. 
Finally, these pictures are called area models because the probability is the area of the outcomes you're interested in compared to the area for all possibilities. Let's take a little closer look at that. Area models, so there's our thing. Pictures are area models, like we said. The width of that rectangle is one-sixth of the width of the entire whole possibility rectangle. The height of the four rectangle is one-half. So the area is one-half times one-sixth, a total of one-twelfth of the area of the entire rectangle. Height times width. Got it? See you around.